Hi, I'm John Blake Negro. And I'm Hunt Tim Witherell. So Hunt, we were talking about something pretty interesting. I think we were noting the continuing evolution of the medium and how much more complex it can become. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we were talking about how historic processes are seeing a, a revitalization as a result of digital technology and there are all these new digital options right. for printing and display and image creation. And I think you made a really interesting statement that amid that diversity or that, I think you used the word cornucopia mm -hmm. of choices, which I thought was a great way of looking at it, uh, that it's starting to put a little more emphasis on content and vision, and that it's often more challenging to speak about vision than it is about the craft. You can quantify an f-stop, but speaking articulately about the qualitative aspects of work is, is a real challenge. It is a real challenge. Not only a, a challenge to uh, talk about, it's also a challenge to kind of uh, come to realization in your own mind about what it is that you are doing and what you are saying with your photography. Mm -hmm. And the point I think I was trying to make was that with digital photography, unlike conventional photography in which you really had to work for a while to to kind of hone your technique. Mm. It was like, there's this old saying that if you buy a camera, you are a photographer. <laughs> if you buy a violin, you own a violin. You own a violin, right, yeah. right. It takes, some it takes some time to learn how to play a violin. You're not just gonna, you know, run out of the store with it and start playing it. Uh, a kind of analogy can be drawn between conventional photography where you, you had to learn your technique. Mm. You still have to learn technique with digital, and I think it's extremely important that you have control of your tools and materials before you can start to make any kind of meaningful vision. But, uh, you know, the days of having trouble making a sharp image with, that is tonally clear and, uh, you know, has all the tonal rays and, and values in the places that you want is certainly a lot easier. Uh, it's it's a lot more assured for somebody who has not got a lot of experience than it used to be. Mm. And that then causes, uh, to me, I naturally come to the uh, conclusion that, okay, we've now got this technique where it's not really the important thing now, it's kind of a given that you're going to get a sharp image with a stone and clear. Now we need to start talking about the vision and what are you trying to say with the photographs. And that becomes obviously a lot more difficult and a lot more individualized. Mm. Uh, you know, there's 30 different ways to sharpen your image with Photoshop and Lightroom and all the tools. Uh, there are 300 million ways or reasons that you would want to sharpen an area or not. You know, it all is so individual about uh, how you use the tools to produce the vision that you want. Sure, and I think all of those components are what craft a style. You know, we might Absolutely. make a distinction between the style and the vision. Is, I think stylistically. I'm cool. using them kind of interchangeably, probably incorrectly, but when I say style I, I, and or vision, I'm, I'm speaking of essentially the reason your photographs look so distinctive, mine hopefully look distinctive, and that they look so different from one another. Mm. You know, it's that's your vision and this is my vision, and everybody's vision is unique. Sure. So. Here's where I'm angling, and I don't think there is a correct way of saying this. It's, uh, you can get into a semantic debate because mm -hmm. the words haven't been sorted out. Uh, it's my feeling that the vocabulary that we use, how sharp something is, how much mm -hmm. contrast, what palette, any number of the formal characteristics of the print or the final image, right. is a kind of vocabulary, but that different people use that same vocabulary to say different kinds of things, and there's a sensibility to it. Uh, Brahms' sensibility is entirely different than Mozart, mm -hmm. and having the discussion about how the two are different is, is a particular challenge. Uh, it ultimately, I think it's what the, the statement is about. Our statement is not about uh, beautiful craft, fabulous shadow detail, and extraordinary materials. Right. All of those things support the statements that we want that's, to make. That's true. And in part, I know it's challenging because an artist doesn't always know exactly what that vision is. Mm -hmm until the end of the process, and there are many things about that vision that uh, come up intuitively or from the subconscious, and our conscious mind hasn't found a way to describe that verbally to other people. And certainly there is a quality of images that is ineffable, but I don't think that means that we can't make interesting statements. One, oh, of, the things, oh, yeah. one of the things I appreciate about Terry Barrett's criticizing photographs is that he exposes people to a lot of different ways about making statements, and he'll give you 
a feminist perspective, or he'll give you a Marxist perspective, or he'll give you a psychological perspective. And he suggests, when I copy them all in the same book cover, that these are just ways of entering into the work, and that there are mm -hmm. different, different ways of approaching work that will yield a different kind of conversation. Yeah. Well, I think your use of the word vocabulary is a good one in relation to techniques, because uh, I consider each technique that you learn to be kind of like learning a new word. Right. You take all those techniques, now you know all the words, now you've got to form sentences, yeah. and eventually, you know, a full story. Right. Did uh, you ever hear Jerry Oldsman? Just yeah. because you memorize the dictionary doesn't mean you have anything to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a very good way to put it. Uh, so the idea that, uh, uh, you know, once you... The craft of photography, I guess, if that's uh, the word, or the techniques, are absolutely essential. you got to know... I mean, if you have a lot to say and you don't know the words, you're in equally as... Uh, desperate a position as if you know all the words but have nothing to say. I mean, there's really no difference there. So <laughs> I think there's uh, a difference, but it is. Uh, you're well, right. Well, you, you need either way, either way, there's no communication, and that's what photography <laughs> is. It's communication. If I say a bunch of gibberish to you, yeah. uh, just because I know a lot of words, it's gibberish. And if I don't know any words and you, I sit in silence, I'm not communicating with you then either. Sure. So when you look at somebody else's work. Uh, what are the kinds of things that you take away uh, in terms of having been impressed by that work or creating a statement? And you could phrase that in another way. If you were to hope that somebody would take away something from your work mm -hmm. and or help somebody uh, enter into the work with a series of words, what kinds of things would you say, what ways of approaching it would you start uh, with? It's very hard to, for me to articulate, but I, when I come away from any piece of visual art uh, impressed or, uh, you know, feeling like, gee, I really like that. Or it's, it's normally because uh, the piece of art has shown me the world, some aspect of it, in a way that I never thought of or never uh, have experienced. Mm. Um, and done in a particularly clear or powerful way. Well, it, it needs to be in a clear and powerful way in order to impress you. I mean, you, when you go and look at something and it impresses you, there's something... There, I like to think of it in terms of... Uh, it's like the actor on the stage. Mm. The actor doesn't speak in a normal tone. He has to really exaggerate his voice so that, you know... Well, in visual art, I think that exaggeration is necessary in order to draw the viewer in and to really make clear the statement. Mm. Uh, so... Um, I'm not really sure how that relates to what I take away from some from a piece of art that I find to be you know interesting and successful and that I think is on the plus side, if you will, or whatever. Uh, but it's that I come away from it seeing the world in a little bit different way. Yeah, yeah. Or seeing some aspect of it, and I hope that in my own work, that's really what I'm hoping is that you will you know after you've seen my photograph, you'll go, wow, I never thought to see the world that, in that particular way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting, and it kind of opens up my mind to seeing other things, you know. In other words, I guess it really drives home the point that there are a lot of ways to view the world out there. Yeah. And uh, here's but one way that you may not have thought of. Right. And that's a real reward when, when I get that from seeing a piece of art. Yeah. I think passion is contagious. Yeah. <laughs> and, and craft can help become clear conduit for letting more of that passion through. Mm -hmm. I think clear thinking can as well. Absolutely. Uh, in your, uh, you gave a presentation last night for the Center for Photographic Art, and in it you were talking about uh, doing things like drawing, drawing sketches and uh, writing, mm. doing brainstorming to kind of zero in on what it is uh, that you're focused in, in terms of what you're trying to say with your photography. Mm. I think it's excellent advice to uh, make your thoughts and kind of, there are a lot of passing thoughts that one gets. Uh, that goes through your head every on a daily basis, particularly with the internet and the kind of the way we are bombarded by the media at all times. Uh, taking a thought that goes through your head, maybe it's something somebody said, maybe it's something you read somewhere, and putting it in a more concrete form so that it actually is stored away mm -hmm. and, and becomes uh, more concrete, for lack of a way to put it. Uh, then it's something you can actually use. 
and incorporate it into your work. Whereas, I mean, I can't tell you how many great jokes I've heard, and they just went in one ear and out the other. They were great jokes, but I don't remember them because I didn't, you know, right. at the time that I had this little light go on, I didn't do something with it. Mm -hmm. I think you really do need to do something with the inspirations and the, uh, the little tidbits that come to you that kind of help you to move forward in life. Um, so Ed, I, I hate to parrot your own advice, but I think, you know, doing a little bit of writing, a little brainstorming, uh, whatever it is that you do personally that uh, kind of cements whatever that is mm -hmm. into your brain so that it stays there and it's not just a passing thing. Yeah, and it can lead to other things. But I, I often think of work where the inspiration is a gift. Uh, I don't mean that I have a gift. I mean I've been gifted something mm -hmm. and that I feel that I need to do that kind of soul searching in order to be an effective advocate for the gifts I've received. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Yeah, very helpful. And and I would also uh, agree with you, uh, for, again, from your presentation about uh, creativity. Uh, everybody is creative. Yeah. Uh, the ones that are outstandingly creative seem to be the ones that actually take their own creativity, and they work really hard at it, mm. to develop it and uh, nurture it and uh, try to craft it into uh, a more concrete pursuit rather than... Uh, the, you know, I, I'm creative and I'm just going to kind of sit around here. It's going to come and get me one of these days. You know? <laughs> so over the past 40 years or so, I've considered myself to be a photographer 24 hours a day. And by that, I don't mean that I'm out, sh you know, with a camera in my hand shooting 24 hours a day or that I'm not sleeping and eating and doing all these other things. Uh, but I'm constantly thinking about some aspect of photography and or visualization. And I think that's where the passion is mm. in photography. And I think by just being so focused on that, uh, that allows you to uh, be receptive to that inspiration we talked about. Absolutely. So. It's always great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.